this is the headphone too, and it's unique because it uses HAL AMT, the air motion transformer drivers that are normally used as tweeters in speakers. I actually have three pairs of speakers here, a pair of LX, a pair of Adams, and a pair of Emotivas, all of which use AMT drivers. But using them as a full range driver and a pair of headphones, well actually that's not heads first foray into doing so. The original model, which I also have here, well, it was certainly impressive looking. It had large drivers and maybe not the best ergonomics as if I put them on my head. Yeah, they probably left a little bit to be desired. I mean, they're at the largest setting now and they kind of barely fit. Now for their second version of their headphones, literally headphones, they have not just updated the headphone, they have completely transformed it. It is literally a new model with smaller drivers and a complete redesign. Now, it's not ob obvious here, but you have magnesium cups, a magnesium yoke, a carbon fiber headband, and what I would say is probably the most over-engineered adjustment system I have ever seen, such that they patented it. So to adjust it, you can see all the straps there. What you actually do is stick it on your head, you undo these straps on the side on both, and the bottom one, I have to remember which is which, the bottom one is used, you put them on your head until you get just the right position with your ears in the middle, and then you pull the bottom ones to give the tension to the head pad to, just fit, to position how far up and down they are, and they call this the shape adjustment. Then you pop those in back into place, if I can do so, which I've managed to, and then you can adjust the tension, which is pulls a little bit left and right till it's comfortable. So you might want to adjust tension so you get maybe the up and down, like the vertical angle balance about right, and then you pop those back on, which is a little bit fiddly, but once it's done, actually, it sits very consistently in the, in the position that you need for listening. And that's important because these are designed as studio monitors, more so than they are listening headphones, although they do have a GT version which has been tuned slightly differently with slightly different ear pads for, well, audiophile listening. But the AMT drivers are certainly up there when it comes to audiophile gear because they are very resolving and able to push out a lot of air, which is necessary when you're you know, in speakers and you have to project sound across a room. So you could almost say in some respects they're like overkill for a pair of headphones. Also you have these ear pads which can be popped off. So with a firm pull, they're actually held in by a rubber O-ring and they come with a second spare set. And because they're left and right are universal, they're angled, but they can be used on either side, turn one way up or the other. Then if you damage one or they happen to wear out, well, you've got a spare set there. Now there inside you can see the Hale AMT driver. This driver is in a has a kind of concertina shape. So instead of looking like you know a flat surface that's moving in and out, it has a concertina which is squashed and it pushes air forward and backwards obviously as well. And that's how the sound comes out. Now, but to transform the driver into a full range driver, they've made some adjustments to the design and it can cover everything from low bass 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz, actually higher, I believe up to 40 kilohertz. So it meets the uh, good old high res criteria, although the value of that is of course, uh, you know, people have different opinions on that kind of thing. But overall, it means you have a pair of headphones where 550 grams is 25% lighter than the, well, very chunky originals. And they end up being very comfortable to have on your head and listen with. And they do feel a little bit heavy, but because of the position, the, the whole setup, I found them kind of easy to listen with. And unless you have issues with putting anything, any strain on your neck, which the occasional person does, I think for most people would find them pretty fine. Now, finally, they have 3.5 millimeter cable entries on the cups. And the cables they come with are these kind of very braided, thin wire braided cables, which of course being 3.5 millimeter, you can easily replace them with cables from anything, well, a lot of other stuff. For example, I often use this Meze cable when I'm listening because it happens to be shorter, convenient, and we'll, we'll talk about more of that later. The only issue that came up is I was a little bit worried about the robustness of these, and it turned out to be that when I was plugging them in, I felt something, you know, poking my finger, and I think it's on this one on one side, it does have a bit of wire sticking out. I don't, I take a very good care of stuff that manufacturers send to me for review, you know, I have padding around, I hang everything on, on, on hangers, you know, I take care of everything. But still, something seems to have damaged this cable very slightly, and it's the first cable I've had that has been damaged at all. 
So even though this is designed for maybe you know a workplace where there you know could be I don't know how much rough treatment goes on in in, in uh, say with uh, studio engineers and that, that kind of thing, but that kind of thin cabling braided I would say it could have done with an extra layer of tech flex over it to uh, ensure its uh, robustness. So like the old cable actually. But on the good side, it does come with enough cables and adapters that you can connect to, well, all the main ones, 4-pin XLR, 4.4mm Pentacon, 3.5mm, and 6.3mm. So you have enough cabling for everything. And if you are taking them on the go, they have a case. And it's a suitably substantial case with a carrying handle. And inside, and so the stuff doesn't fall out because there are a couple of uh, cards here, including the five-year warranty card, it has a little pocket for the cables to go in, and then it holds the headphones in there very firmly. So, as terms of accessories and design, I'd say these are excellent. Unique in some respects, and excellent in others. With only maybe the exception that I would prefer more robust cables. Now, as I said, being that they're studio monitors, they are tuned rather differently from a lot of high-end headphones. They're probably closer to something like Odyssey's MM500s, which I also have in for review. They have a tuning which you can see graphs and conveniently headphones.com does have graphs both using the DRAS system which or grass system which is used for the Harman target curve as well as a new BNK system. Now headphones.com used a what's called a uh, diffuse field plus 10 dB slope which is equivalent to say neutral or flat in terms of general listening although of course with headphones nothing is completely flat as our individual ears do have do respond to frequencies somewhat differently especially in the mid-range and extremely in the treble but overall they tend to have a darker sound signature flat through from the bass although the low bass seems to be a little bit lacking in some respects though that's not so noticeable with uh, most music a bit of a hump at one kilohertz and generally an overall darker signature through the mids and treble when i first listened with them and you know had them want to listen to music Music doesn't sound particularly like exciting or bright or fun to listen with like it does with a lot of headphones. You know, I usually listen, say, with the Susfire Unveiled. But one thing that is very apparent is the amount of detail they have. I felt kind of overall that the uh, mid-range came through a little bit aggressively, maybe with a little bit of too much warmth. That kind of one kilohertz bump tended to adjust things a little bit. But once I got ad adapted to that kind of darker monitor sound signature, I could hear a lot of detail coming through the mid-range especially, you know, vo vocals, instruments, and the like. There was certainly a lot of resolution coming through there. Now, the only thing is that this kind of tuning is designed so that someone engineering music can hear exactly what's going on in their mix. When you have something tuned to be, you know, artificially bright or V-shaped or whatever, that's coloring things in a way to artificially give space to the music, like if you pull back the mid-range, make things brighter to make, make them sound more exciting, or you put various dips, and, uh, peaks and dips in there to make the, say, the percussion sound more dynamic, or you have, you know, like a the typical Harman curve type tuning with the a big low bass boost to kind of give that heaviness to music where it does have low bass, or a slight pullback in the uh, mid bass to ensure that the, the music doesn't sound too thick. None of that exists in here, so a lot of music initially did sound kind of well, kind of unexciting, but I could hear clearly, pretty clearly a delineation of where things were left to right, and to some degree front to back, especially plugged into the Core TD2 and M scale, which have excellent imaging capabilities, although some of that was a little bit masked. So for example, listening with Tom Waits, Alice, which is one of my favorite tracks, this is a remastered version of the album. For example, Tom's voice sits perfectly in the middle, with you know the other instruments you know placed left to right as they were in the mix or maybe in the recording and the sound stage to me was a little bit deeper rather than wider with this one now it wasn't particularly deep as such i mean i usually when i've heard record headphones designed for studio monitoring use it sounded like everything was like out in front of me from left to right more so than it was kind of around my head which some headphones try and simulate with their tuning so in this case, it wasn't quite so deep in all cases. Now, tonality, of course, was on the warm side, and so that has to be cautioned against, especially compared to the MM500s, which have a closer to diffuse field tuning, maybe with a bit more mid-range emphasis, but they do sound a little bit brighter overall. So that tended to affect how I perceived the soundstage in different types of music. I sometimes thought it was a little bit more precise with the MM500s, probably to a degree influenced by the uh, careful design of the magnets and the internal structure to ensure that their clarity when the, the sound waves hit your ears. Whereas sometimes maybe I felt that the 
headphone was a little bit better in that case, depending on the, the recording I was listening to, especially live recordings that maybe were recorded with, say, a microphone pair and the like. Another track, though, The Spoils by Massive Attack. Well, this, this has Hope Sandoval in it, and it the you know the beat comes through wonderfully here with the with the uh, headphones not overblown but you do have a sense of feeling of it now with other headphones of course you might have more bass and you might feel it more but it's more monitoring that you can okay the beats there you can hear it it's clear which is going to be important for a pair of monitoring headphones now hope's voice was back from the center and the sound stage was again deeper rather than narrower on my system and that's listening at a fair and moderate listening level there is a strong feeling when listening with that track to there being a lot of detail and it's not detail that comes through from brightness like with a lot of headphones but actual resolution where you could hear what was going on from you know all the subtle details of Hope's voice and all the instruments that are in the mix. So overall that made me feel like I was listening to the music as it was rather than listening to say a particular presentation of the headphones. And that again did take some getting used to as you know I'm used to listening with a lot of headphones that to some degree are colored. Another track Heavens Here on Earth by Tracy Chapman and it's from her new beginning album. Now of course with Tracy's voice sitting nicely in front and then they can hear the shaker out to one side and you could very clearly hear the echo of instruments around the venue inside where, where they're recording, whether it be a recording studio or what have you. And that made, that made me feel especially that there was a lot of detail available through these headphones. One of my favorite singers lately is Jose Gonzalez. And from the, his, his Slow Moves track from the Veneer album, which is a uh, 2023 remaster. Now this track is a very intensive track. And it comes through, well, well as much, it comes through as being a very intensive track through the headphone with a noticeable emphasis in the mid-range especially you know his voice and the instruments uh, the guitar especially through these and in other tracks which have a strong guitar the guitar was very noticeable and very prominent now the thing about that is I felt sometimes that the mid-range was too prominent and too sharp and I wondered about that so what I ended up doing which I can show you is I popped off the uh, ear pads and had a look underneath there is a metal plate in front of the driver. Now anything where you have a flat surface like metal or plastic is going to do cause reflections inside the cups and cause some kind of distortion. Now we've looked at other headphones that overcame this by using resonators such as the Dan Clark Audio E3s and Stealth and Expanse. In this case I thought now I decided to do a little trick that I knew from way back. Now up on the shelf you can probably just see the old Sony MDR Z7s. It's the original pair that I reviewed many years back. They had an interesting issue where someone opened up the cups and in the back of the cups it was just all plastic. So he thought what happens if I you know cover that with something that might damp internal reflections will it improve the slight edginess of the mid-range and he did that and it does and I did it as well and I could hear clearly that by reducing the internal reflections I could improve the sound quality. So to do that I got out the same material as I used for that experiment which is this basic two dollar you know cloth tape that you buy for taping bandages at the drugstore. And yes, I modified headphones with Tudela tape. Yeah, okay. And what I did is I covered those, and you can see it on this one, covered the metal surfaces with very carefully cut four millimeter strips. Got out the tweezers and did this very, very carefully so as not to harm the driver or harm the headphones. And it's reversible because it takes all of 30 seconds to remove. Actually, the strips were reusable so I could take them off and put them back on for each song and have another listen. And the net result was quite interesting. Now take those guitars or vocals that Tom Waits or the Jose Gonzalez and the like. When I replayed it after putting on the strips, now the soundstage became even narrower. And that's what happens when you do damp reflections. The same kind of thing sort of happens with the Sennheiser HD800S or in the original HD800s especially. If you over damp them, you get a very precise soundstage but a much smaller one. And this already has a small kind of soundstage so it made it smaller still. But the precision and the accuracy of the imaging improved very noticeably. The harshness and edginess of the, the, the forward guitars and vocals disappeared and I could hear more subtle nuances in the music. Now at this point someone's going, you saying I should buy $2,000 headphones and spend and modify them with $2 tape? I'm not saying anything. I just did this and out of you know experience with headphones, I thought I wanted to know about how these headphones are. And from the perspective of say someone who, you know, I have never mastered music in my life, but I have an idea having talked to people what is involved. I just wanted to kind of, you know, review these headphones and this is my experience with them. And 
Well, you can make your own conclusions from that as you like. But even without the tape mod, I found them to be a very resolving pair of headphones. Maybe for a listening point of view, if you are someone who finds a lot of head modern headphones too bright, if you don't, for example, like an overemphasized treble or overemphasized bass, then you might actually find them very good for music listening. If you're someone who finds that a lot of headphones such as the E3s are too mid forward, you might not like these because they're going to be very focused on the mid-range, especially stock where they're, you know, especially guitars and vocals as I described. But they do also have a GT version with an upgrade cable and what seem to be cloth pads for audiophile listening. The other alternatives in that kind of range of being fa fairly neutral, of course, are the MM500s. They have the advantage of being more sensitive. Now, in terms of using them with gear, I use them with a variety of, you know, amplifiers that I have here, all of which are quite capable. They do have a sensitivity which is not too low, but fairly low. I think it was 89 decibels per milliwatt, which is not excessively low. You know, things like Sennheiser HD800s are closer to about 100 and something, I believe. A lot of headphones, common headphones are up there about nine, above 95. So they're probably a little bit low and are going to be a little bit demanding on, say, voltage and current. So that means you probably can plug them into portable gear, but it may not be ideal for especially bass response or where you have very dynamic music. And head themselves recommend amps where at least, you know, about 300 milliwatts, but maybe amps that have one amp available of power are going to be most ideal. So that's one area where the, the uh, MM500 is going to have an advantage, being that it's way more sensitive, it will work out of a lot more gear. In terms of hi-fi listening, something like the E3s, which are similarly priced, having being closer to the Harman curve and having more low bass, and maybe having less of a recessed you know, a treble area like the headphone do, do sound a little bit more exciting to listen with, although some people don't like the kind of speaker-like mid-range, whereas a lot of headphones these days tend to be pulled back a little bit in the mid-range around the two kilohertz mark to give a little bit more sense of space. And this is something where different people have kind of a different feeling about what is ideal. Overall, however, I think the headphones are a fantastic effort by the company. It's really hard to criticize something that they would have gone into a huge effort to design, especially designing a completely unique adjustment system and one that is, well, overall makes them very comfortable to wear and listen to music with. I think as a monitoring headphone, if you are going to be looking for a pair of headphones professionally, then it's worth considering auditioning these to see if they suit your setup. For general audiophile listening, again, you might want to consider that if you want something that is generally neutral or on the darker side of things because of how you what you prefer, then these may be very good as well as they are very resolving headphones and their flaws are only very minor, all things considered. If you do have a pair of headphones, please do leave a comment below and your own experiences with them as it'd be very good for everyone watching here not to have just my opinion but the opinions of actual owners. Likewise, if you'd like to support my work, do consider becoming a supporter or patron. And I'd like to thank all my patrons and sponsors for supporting my channel. As always, thanks once again for watching and I look forward to chatting with you online.